Okay, listen, I was primed to like this movie, okay? I was. I, like, if anybody was gonna be a defender of Joker Foyle-a-do, 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 it's whatever, French, I, pronunciation off, I guess, Foyle-a-do, that might be it. Anyways, Joker 2. If, if anybody was, if anybody was primed to like this movie, it was me, okay? I'm like, a Joker 2 movie? Like a, like, first of all, I love Joker, okay? I watched it back when it came out. I was like, awesome. This looks, this, is, this was awesome, okay? Joker and Harley Quinn doing Joker. Fantastic. Let's do this. Love it. You know, I'm like, okay, right? They were, we were hearing rumors. There were, it was going to be a musical. I was like, okay. I, I don't like musicals typically, but I'm like, okay, I can get on board with that, okay? I, I'm like, okay. Okay, let's let's see what we're do what we're dealing with here. Like, I like I I definitely was someone like I was going into this, like I was I was hearing the reviews right, I was hearing the early reviews, and I was I was like okay, so I was like, I'm probably gonna like this. Like this is probably gonna be a movie that like most people don't really like, but it's one that I kind of like, you know, just because it's like kind of my kind of thing, right? I have movies like that where there's a lot of people really don't like them and they just don't because they just don't get them and then I watch it and I'm like oh my god like it's so good but then like because I get it when other people's don't right uh, movies like this there's like one great example is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice I love that movie most people hate it a lot of people hate that movie but it's because to me, it's because they don't really get the whole messaging. Another example is Tenet. That's a movie that was just really confusing and a lot of people didn't like it. But I got it and I really liked it. So I'm like, I'm trying to like this movie. I should like this movie. Should is the word here because I came out of the movie theater and I was like, like my, my, my thought, like watching the movie, I was, I was like, like, I was probably going to put it like middle of my ranking for like the, all the movies I've seen this year. So I, I was thinking it was going to be like towards the middle, at worst towards the middle, at best towards the top. This one immediately dropped to the bottom of my list. Like immediately, just like, now granted, I watched Borderlands, so it didn't go past Borderlands. So Borderlands is still like last place for me. But like Joker, Foyle Do is like number two of worst movie I've seen this year. And like, it's it's frustrating. And like when I, when I was texting, because um, I, when I, I went to see the movie and I had a couple friends that I wanted to text to let them know what I thought of the movie, because they were kind of unsure whether or not they wanted to watch the movie or not. And what I told them was, don't even bother. This is just a waste of time. It's a waste of time. The movie itself is just a waste of time. And like, you know, I've heard people throw out like this, mo this movie didn't need to exist. Okay, so like an ex examples of movies that don't need to exist but are actually really good. Uh, first example, Top Gun Maverick. That movie doesn't need to exist. Top Gun came out in like the 80s it doesn't need a sequel. It doesn't need Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick doesn't need to exist. However, it's a great movie. Like, it doesn't need to exist, but we're all glad it does. Uh, another example, one that came out this year, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Came out in 1988. It doesn't need a sequel. There is no, like, obvious path forward. It doesn't, like, um, like it doesn't beg for a sequel. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice came, comes out. It, you don't need that sequel. It does. We don't need it. But it's a movie that we really like. I really enjoyed Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That went up towards the top of my list. Like that's that's another movie that doesn't need to exist. But it's. But we're all glad it does. I feel saying Joker Foyle to do doesn't need to exist is giving it too much credit. <laughs> like I. I feel like. I feel like this movie, not, not just, not only does it need to exist, it shouldn't exist because it doesn't do anything for like anybody, really. Like it's, it's a waste of, like, it's a waste of a sequel. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. Like, like I, I wouldn't even recommend watching this movie on streaming. Like that's like, 
And it's not like it's made poorly. It's not like, you know, it's terrible dialogue or, you know, shoddy filmmaking or whatever. It's because it's shot beautifully. It's act like the actors do a great, fantastic job. I guess you could say the writing is solid enough. Um, I guess you know, then the question is like story versus like actual writing and dialogue or whatever. But like, like the cinematography of it is spectacular. But that doesn't matter. Like the movie just like who cares? Like this movie just doesn't need to exist. It's um, like it, it doesn't do anything. Like the story doesn't go like Arthur Fleck is in the same position at the beginning of the movie that he is at the end of the movie. Well, except for the ending bit. But like before the end, he's in the same place at the beginning of the movie and then at the end of the movie, he's just in the same place. He doesn't, Arthur Fleck doesn't go anywhere. Nothing, like everything that happens doesn't matter. It's like, what's even the point? Like it's not even it's not a character study of Arthur Fleck because we don't really dive into his psyche. Uh, we do get some like delusional stuff, but it doesn't add anything. It doesn't really make you know it makes you question some things. But then like when you think about it, it's like does that answer even really matter? Like what's what's the point of that? Um, there are certain sequences where you kind of dive into his mind into his fantasy, but then it doesn't do anything. Uh, those those dives into like into his uh, into his delusions, like they're just him imagining he's on a stage with Harley Quinn. That's it. That's literally it. It's just like okay, let's you know, delulu. You know, let's just be all you know, singing and dancing and and on a stage. And it doesn't tell you anything about Arthur. It doesn't do anything it doesn't progress the story it doesn't tell you anything about him um you know the the term foil to do is like french for like a shared delusion between two people or something like that i don't get that at all like whatever is a shit like like whatever is delusional i think it really is only like what like i don't know it doesn't really feel like it's a shared delusion or whatever i was hoping for something more like you know you know, like a lot of joke, like there is like, and there's hardly any Joker in this movie. Like, Ar it's mostly Arthur Fleck, and he doesn't really do anything Joker like in the movie. So, like, you have like all the Joker stuff comes in the first movie, and here, like, you ha you ha basically all of Joker is just in his mind, and though so none of that is reality. But then they also do clearly show you, like, in for the most part, like the Joker bits are all you know is in his is, is in his mind so it doesn't really it doesn't really do anything so the joke the whole joker stuff doesn't really even happen um i was cool with you know I, like i could tell you know you know from the trailers you knew that harley quinn like harley quinn was gonna be a like a fellow inmate i was cool with that you know they're changing up her origin story but i'm cool with that you know i want to see what they're gonna do with it and like it doesn't really feel like they do anything with her She's, she's not, like, the relationship isn't, like, if, if you were going into this movie looking for uh, the relationship between Joker and Harley Quinn, you don't really get that. That's, like, more of, like, a B-plot kind of thing. It's not really even, like, a main part of the plot. Actually, in fact, the movie doesn't really even have a plot because it's, like, the, in, the entire movie is just, like, an epilogue to Joker. The whole thing is just wrapped around Joker so like what 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 he did in Joker, like the entire movie is wrapped around that, and so it doesn't move forward in any sense because its entire plot is basically rehashing what happened in Joker and just kind of like retelling you that and kind of rehashing and go and dealing with the fallout and um, you know and so like it doesn't progress the story forward. In fact, like, again, by the end of the movie, nothing really changes. Um, and so, like, like, it was, it's a movie that at first, like, I was coming out and I'm like, wow, that was kind of disappointing. And the more I think about it, it's just, it just kind of pisses me off just because there's some, they could have done something really interesting and really cool and they didn't. And that's just kind of what pisses me off is that nothing in that movie mattered. The whole movie is just a, is just pointless. 
And on top of that, it even tries to undo stuff that happened in the first movie. Like it's it's trying to re like 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 I said it's it, it it's obsessive over the previous movie. It go, even goes to the point of showing shots from the previous movie um, several times. It brings in characters from the previous movie. It shows shots from the previous movie, and um, and then it tries to rewrite the previous movie. And it's like, what are we doing? Like, what's the point of this? I don't I don't get why we're doing this at all. And if this is if this is Todd Phillips giving a big F you to Warner Brothers, because you know, like Joker was not didn't need a sequel, it wasn't made for a sequel in mind. And then Warner Brothers saw the billion dollars that Joker made off of a fifty-five million dollar budget, and they had like dollar signs in their eyes and they're like, hey, Todd, you wanna make another movie for us? Another Joker Joker? Another Joker movie? And then Todd, if, like, Todd was probably like, no, maybe, I don't know. Maybe he was convinced by the $200 million budget and was like, okay, I guess I can make a movie, but you're not going to like it. Like, <laughs> this is the last time you're going to ask me to do a Joker movie because you're not going to be happy with this. Um, it's kind of like, if that's what he was going for, he certainly, certainly did it. Um, because this movie is not for Joker fans. Oh yeah, I forgot to even mention um, the, the, the musical bits. The musical bits do literally nothing for the movie. Uh, you can take them out and it would make the movie better. It's pointless. The musical bits are just, and they're not even like, it's not even like a full-fledged musical. It's like a full-fledged musical. Think of like La La Land, right? Or um, really, um, like really any of the kind of famous musicals where you've got, um, kind of like full-fledged, you break out into song and dance and um, you've got choreography and sometimes in musicals you've got like a whole set change to be uh, a little bit more uh, fun and energetic and you know kind of match the more music musical vibes. This doesn't do that at all. Um, a lot of the music is just singing kind of acapella-ish, um, kind of like off the cuff um, and it's not even like full-fledged like studio music or whatever. Um, so it doesn't really completely feel like a musical. It's just like Arthur Fleck singing. So you just have Joaquin Phoenix singing. Um, I think one time he's like just singing into a phone. It's sort of like, like it's, it doesn't really do like, again, the musical aspect doesn't help the film. It doesn't go into full fledged, like musical, like rom-com musical kind of thing. It doesn't really do that. It, the whole movie is just a waste. I don't recommend watching this movie at all. It's just, it's a waste of time. And if you really enjoyed Joker and I mean, first, firstly, if you want, if you just want, like, obviously you probably go check it out. Maybe like probably avoid, you know, um, going to pay, f you know, for, for bleh, try to probably try to avoid going to pay for a full fledged ticket uh, at a theater. Uh, for the movie and if you're very curious, you know, maybe check it out on streaming later on um, but like if you're like if you can have your movies Retroactively ruined for you um, For me Joker cannot be like you can't like once like if I enjoy a movie a, a sequel cannot ruin the previous movie That's just it's just not possible for me but for some people um, if, if, if the movie, if you, if a movie can be ruined by its sequel, Joker gets ruined by Joker for you to do. So beware of that. If you, if you really like Joker and your sequels can ruin the previous movie, this movie will ruin Joker. So it's, don't, don't go in like, like there's just really no reason to watch this movie. Um, I, I can't think of anybody who would like this movie would be made for or they'd be like, oh my gosh, you guys would love this movie. I can't think of a single person. I don't know who that demographic would be. This is, it's, it's a beautiful movie, well acted, but the whole movie, it just doesn't need, it just, like there's no point to it. It is pointless, it is useless, and it is just a pure waste of time and money. So that is, that is my review for Joker Foyle Do. I have no idea if I've been pronouncing it correctly this entire time. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this review, go ahead and hit the like button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.